connect evolution yeah. with Christianity and trying to make sense of it, trying to uh, bring them together. Now, uh, what is the gap theory? The gap theory is, is they believe something happened between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. And uh, to mix with this, they also believe each day of creation is, is uh, 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 millions of years, or there's a long process of happening between each day of creation in Genesis 1. The church people. Uh, in Genesis 1, where each day they will believe that uh, each day was millions of years, so that way it'll cause, uh, it'll, it'll be able for evolution. And we'll see what the Word of God says about that. From 1814, gap creationist was popularized by a guy named Thomas uh, Cham Chandler, who attributed the concept to the 17th century Dutch Armenian theologian Simon Escopius. I think that's how you pronounce the name correctly. So, uh, but let's, let's read what the Word of God says here. It says in Genesis 1 uh, 1 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So they look at that. They look at verses 1 and 2, and with their own imagination, the gap theory is viewed that God created a fully functional earth before. So they look at, at 1 and 2, they, they say God created everything already. They had all the animals, including dinosaurs, and other creatures we know as uh, from our fossils, all these fossils and stuff. So remember, these people, they, they're trying to make sense of evolution with the Bible. So they look at the fossils, and they say, well, in the Bible, dinosaurs is not in there. So maybe that happened between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2. And then the theory goes that something happened to destroy the earth completely. And they believe this is when Satan fell, so that uh, the planet became without form and void. And at that point, God started over again, recreating the earth and the paradise further described in Genesis 1. So there's a few things. They, they believe that in between Genesis 1 and 2, 1, 1 and 1, 2, that God created everything already, but Satan fell and it destroyed and it destroyed everything. That's when death happened, and then God recreated everything again. And that's then it goes on from two, two to the rest of the Bible. Well, um, one thing we'll get to that is death didn't happen until after the fall of man, so that wouldn't go there. But we'll look, we're going to read at. Uh, how each day in the Bible is 24 hours. We're going to attack that one first. The second one, we're going to talk about how death happened after the fall, how it doesn't make sense to have the gap theory, and then how dinosaurs were around with humans. So we can find all these things in the Bible, and it completely debunks what gap theory is. Now, for someone to say in the Bible that in Genesis that creation is millions of years, you can tell that they didn't read the Bible carefully. So back to Genesis 1. Um, we read that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the uh, face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now read this part. Verse 5, it says, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So there's some people who are in the group, uh, in the gap theory, they believe each day would be millions of years. Well, if it's for one day, is a million, just say one day is one million years, let's split that in half. How is it possible for life to create for half, for 500,000 years of life and 500,000 years of darkness. It wouldn't make sense. Here's why it wouldn't make sense. If you skip down to verse 11, it 
It says, God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seed and the fruit trees yielding fruits after, its, after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and yield herb and seed after its kind, and the tree yielding <coughs> fruit, whose seed was in itself after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the third day. Now, if each day, like I said, if each day is a million of years, according to their belief mixed with evolution, then they're missing a huge major part. Life cannot survive with that much time of light. Because if it's going to, if, if we, like this, the picture that I showed where it's 500,000 years of light, if we're just narrowing it down to 1 million years, then the light will burn up everything green. Then if it's 500 years of darkness, it'll freeze everything green. So this is why it shows that creation was six literal days, like how we have now, it's 24 hour days, where it was six hours of light, six hours, or 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. That's, that way everything will, will circulate perfectly. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about was how death happened after the fall. Now, it, like I said before, they, uh, the people who created the gap theory, they believe that the fall happened right between Genesis 1-2. They believe God created everything, the dinosaurs died there, all the, all the animals that we have in fossils died there, and that's when Satan fell. Well, if back, in t back uh, to verse 13, Genesis 1-13, no, verse 1, 13, well, verse 12, at the end of it, it says, God saw everything that he made, and he saw that it was good. So if there was any failure, he wouldn't say that that was good. Because prior to that, prior to the fall, everything God made was good. So the gap theory shows death before Adam, before Adam sinned, the view that God created a fully functional earth with animals. But let's look with uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 29, uh, 29 to 30. It says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in it which is uh, the tree, which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein that uh, there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Food, uh, food was for all, uh, food was for all the, the source of food for all animals. So animals didn't go out and eat other animals before the fall. Everything that we saw growing, that was considered, uh, that was considered um, the food for the animals. Verse uh, 31, it says, And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. Now, everything God made before the fall of man was perfect. It was without error. There was no death. There was no fall of Satan. Satan didn't have fought this time. Everything was perfect. Now, if, if we read verse, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin into the world, death by sin, and so death passed unto all men, for all have sinned. So this is when death entered into the world, when uh, Adam sinned. And that's when, after Adam sinned, that's when death started happening. But before that, animals lived, you know, would have lived forever. Humans would have lived forever. But after Adam uh, sinned, he it pretty much cursed everything, and it caused, that's when death entered. Now, dinosaurs. This is one of my favorite things to talk about in the Bible. Uh, you know, we hear, well, we can't look for dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are not in the Bible. Well, it's funny, uh, you know, that thing, because dinosaur is more of a modern, is a modern word, it's a modern term. It was created in 1841 by Sir Richard Owen. And it's an English uh, word, 
but is the Greek is dinos, which means terrible or monstrous, and saurus, which means lizard. So dinosaur pretty much means a terrible lizard or monstrous lizard. And most often, these animals are referred to in the Bible as dragons, as we see in the Bible. Everywhere in the Bible, we, you know, where it mentions uh, of an animal as such large things, they're either mentioned as a dragon. As in Isaiah 27, 1 is, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Jeremiah 51, 34, you don't have to go to me, just listen. It says, he has swallowed me up like a dragon. He has filled his belly with my uh, delicates. Psalm 70, uh, 74, 13 says, thou breakest the head of the dragon in the water. Job 41, 19, 21 says, Out of the mouth goes burning lamps, and sparks of fire leaps out. Out of the nostrils uh, goes smoke, as out of, uh, as out of the sea, sea of pot of, um, of cardinal. His breath kindles coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. This is like a fire-breathing dragon, which is, this is actually talking about. And it's really amazing how we would call them today dinosaurs, as the Bible would call them dragons. Isaiah 36, it says, and a uh, vipery, fiery, flying serpent. Now, it gives, you know, it talks about that, but in the Bible, it also describes two different kinds of, of um, dinosaurs. But today, we're going to talk about one, one of them, and it's in Job 40. Job 40, 14. And through 19, this is, and this is talking about, it says, Behold now, uh, behemoth, which I made with thee, he eateth gra grass as an ox. Lo, now his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. Now, people will look at that and, you know, they'll say, oh, that's a, a hippo or that's a rhino. Well, hippos and rhinos, their tails are really small. A cedar is a tree. What dinosaur do you know that has a, a tail as long as a tree? You know, I, you know, from the cartoon movies, we call them brontosaurus, which I don't know the exact terminology of it. It just left me, but it'll be a brontosaurus is what we'll call this dinosaur. And, it's, and, it's, and God is talking to Joe about how magnificent and big this animal is. It says, he, uh, his stones are wrapped together and his bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of all the ways of God. He that, uh, that made him can make a sword upon his approach. Now, if you keep reading this, just in the Bible talks about how he swallows up pretty much rivers. I mean, this is a mighty animal, mighty beast. And as we see, dinosaurs were along with humans. And today, you know, we do see, uh, see some animals. And that, we can go into another topic about that, but uh, that's what I want to show you, how the gap theory doesn't fit with the Bible. You can't mix evolution, which is a, a theory to debunk God, and that has no foundation. You can't mix that with the Word of God to say, hey, yes, it makes sense. Whereas we see that the Bible is a 24-hour day. The creation was made in 24 hours, six 24-hour days. How the fall and death happened after, uh, after uh, David sinned. And how dinosaurs weren't just before creation, but dinosaurs were amongst uh, men as well. So that's my sermon for today. And uh, I want to give the floor to, to Nick.